Hi, so in this video I'm going to talk a bit about resilience in social work, specifically with regards to social workers themselves. So it's useful to think about resilience because it's something that's often asked about in interviews and it's really something to sort of know practically as well about sort of the different views on it because it's something that can be contentious um, but also uh, there's just it's generally looked upon as an important attribute of a social worker to be able to cope with sort of the stresses of the role because uh, social work can be emotionally demanding so resilience is important because we need to have the ability to bounce back from uh, difficult situations and sort of have um, the ability to prioritise our own well-being. So there are things that we can do on an individual level so it may be that you find things like uh, going out and being outside and um, helps with managing your stress levels, seeking support from others from supervision or your peers and all of that really helps you to feel strong and able to sort of cope with whatever social work throws at you. But then on the other side of the coin um, is sort of your resilience that's built up from uh, sort of the wider structural factors around you so that may be how your organisation is supporting you to be resilient. So with your organisation um, you would hope that you're having regular supervision, that you're not being asked to do too many things um, like that aren't practical to do in your working week. Obviously I am a social worker and I know about a lot of different people working at a lot of different places and it's not always the case that we are being required to do that. Like we, it's sometimes you can look at your calendar and you look at the, what you're being asked to do and you just think well that I just know that that can't be done in that time and you flag it but then things maybe because of pressures around you and uh, nothing changes even though you've said that you genuinely know that that can't be done and I think if that sort of thing happens over and over time it can make you feel like you're not coping with the stress because it can just absolutely burden you. Um, and lead to you feeling completely overwhelmed um, and I think that it's important to know when that is the case so when your sort of resilience is being undermined from like an organisational and structural level because it may be something that literally you can't change by being better at managing your own stress that it may be something that is outside of your control um, and I think you know I see a lot of people talking about this on social media to do with social work and um, some people saying like you need to know when to leave a role when you've shouted so much about the help that you need and you need to move on but it shouldn't really get to that level like it should be that uh, organisations are taking responsibility to look after their workers and I think that if they are losing people um, in different places it may be because um, they, they're they not able to manage this and social work is stretched and sometimes it can be understaffed so that can lead to issues with this but I think as social workers it's good for us to know when something is not our fault um, so obviously we can build up our coping strategies but also it can be sort of like a form of victim blaming if we feel like we're doing everything to look after ourselves but still feel um, like we're being blamed for uh, not being resilient enough when actually it's outside of our control. So I think it's an important thing to raise really. I think that the, there's a couple of other things that are useful to look into um, just to sort of build your awareness around this. So I looked at the secure base model, it's a bit of research to relating to social work and teens and how sort of attachment theory can be looked upon to understand how uh, practitioners can feel secure to go out and do their job when they feel that they've got a supportive team to come back to um, and it can be empowering to see how if those things aren't in place um, why you may be struggling and then also the learning zone model about sort of um, making sure that you, your work is stretching you outside of your comfort zone because that can bring sort of a good feeling and feeling like you're progressing and um, it enhances your well-being to, to be constantly learning. But if we actually go out of that learning zone and into the panic zone all the time, that can actually make us feel constantly stressed, overwhelmed and you can see how sort of being at that stage um, would 
would sort of undermine your resilience as well because you'd constantly be in a feeling of threat and I think sometimes in teams when they are stretched and they don't have the workers it can sort of lead to people uh, feeling like they're having to pick up a lot of work which is outside of their comfort zone or ability to do the role which can make you feel really scared especially when you sort of think about the fact that it's your professional identity that's on the line like you're also and um, that we're registered professionals and you may not feel safe doing that and I think feeling safe in your role is really important in social work.